So this is for the advanced DMT psychomotor exam, bleeding control and shock management station. Um, so a little bit about the equipment that's going to be in the station. Um, you're going to have uh, all the basically the equipment that you see here. So you have everything from different size bandages or different size dressings uh, from five by nine to eight by ten, as well as Curlex um, or rolled gauze um, to secure that. Uh, if you choose to, there will also be uh, an Israeli trauma bandage or an emergency trauma bandage that has your your bandage and dressing kind of all in one. And then as far as the tourniquets for this station. Um, right now we have a, a cat tourniquet, a cat, a combat application uh, tourniquet in there, as well as there will be a bar and some triangular bandages if you want to do an improvised tourniquet. So when you come into the station, um, they're going to give you a scenario. And so I have my patient here is, is moulage and ready to go. And um, our goal is going to be to control the hemorrhaging um, through uh, application of a bandage and then if it continues to bleed through to apply the tourniquet and then to treat for shock. And so um, we'll just give myself a dispatch of a, uh, an 11 year old uh, male patient who has a large laceration to the inside of his right arm. So when we're getting ready to start the station, we then have our BSI on. Make sure that you're wearing BSI appropriate uh, for, the, uh, for the call because of the hemorrhage. You may want gloves, you may want to consider eye protection as well as uh, potential face shields as, uh, as well. So as we come up, I have my BSI on. All right, we make sure the scene is safe. I'm going to go ahead and grab a bandage and we're going to apply direct pressure to the wound. Now when I apply direct pressure to the wound, they're going to, uh, after a little bit, uh, tell me that the wound continues to bleed through. When they tell me that the wound continues to bleed through, I'm gonna have my patient go ahead and hold direct pressure here, hold direct pressure right over that. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my tourniquet. Now, just like all of our tourniquet management, if we can get it below the joint, above the wound, we can. If we can't, uh, if we're gonna be over that joint, we may have to go above the wound. And so we're gonna go ahead and apply my, my tourniquet, pulling it tight, making sure that it's snug with the Velcro. And then I can start twisting my windlass. And we're gonna twist this until that bleeding, right where bleeding stops. So the evaluator tell you the bleeding has now been controlled. So lock your windlass in place, take your pail, bring it through the windlass catch, and then take your white tab and go over. Now, anytime we have a tourniquet application, we should record the time, and we could consider putting a T on the patient for this skill station. They're not gonna have you, um, you know, actually write on the equipment. So at this point, um, they're gonna let you know that your patient starts to exhibit signs of shock, such as, right, they become pale, cool, clammy, uh, maybe lethargic, their heart rate starts to increase, and so at that point, we're gonna consider treating for shock. So to treat for shock with this patient, we're gonna go ahead and lay our patient down. So I really want to keep them warm, and we're going to attach oxygen, and we're gonna place oxygen on the patient with a non-rebreather mask. Now, I don't have any oxygen going, so we're just gonna I verbalize that we're placing the mask on place or in place and oxygen has now been placed. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and of course immediately transport the patient to the hospital and then you can let the evaluator know that you're done with the skill.